Welcome to Church Unleashed, a Lutheran ministry that wants you to know that you are unconditionally loved by God. We know that faith can often seem like a wrestling match, life overwhelming and hope hard to find. Worship gives us a chance to pray, hear sacred stories, rest in love, and be turned outward to prepare for the week ahead. So join us every week, either on TV or online. Take a deep breath as we begin worship together. Good morning and welcome to Church Unleashed. We are glad that you are here to worship with us today. Wherever you are today, welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Steve. And I'm Pastor Jeremiah. What a blessing it is to be here in this uh, start of the new year. You got any uh, New Year's resolutions going, Pastor Jeremiah? I do. I've got two resolutions this year. I want to read less and lose the lottery. So did you mean to say read more? No, no, no. I always fail at my resolutions, so I would just get like to pick achievable ones. Oh. Read less, lose the lottery. Well, yeah, sometimes we want to set our bar really low, like our goals, yes, real low. But that, oh, we got to realize that it's okay to fail. And one of the things we're going to look at in worship today is how does Jesus deal with this? And, and what does Jesus say to us about the time when we're trying to launch new beginnings, like maybe your new career in the lottery or a new book? How do we actually realize it's okay to fail Amen. and we're still loved and we're still graced by God? So uh, we're going to take some time in worship. Pastor Roger is going to be along with us a little bit later in the service, and um, we're glad you're here today. Today. So let's join our hearts together wherever we are in a time of confession and also hear about God's forgiveness and grace for us. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Amen. So let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy, Holy God, God, sometimes, sometimes the, the chaos distracts, distracts us and, and sometimes, sometimes we fail. fail. We, we confess, confess our distractions and our shortcomings to you. We confess all the ways we fail to follow your way. We put ourselves first and forget to love our neighbors. We worry about the problems of others and we neglect ourselves. We have become stuck in our ways of being. We have become addicted to our own way of thinking. God, we need your grace and forgiveness. We need your help to let go. We need a, a new, new beginning. beginning. Amen. Hey, Pastor Jeremiah and friends, rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. With God, everything old has passed away. With God, everything has become new. You have been made new. So be unleashed from your worry, your fear, and shame, and live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Amen. Be 
Good morning, everybody. It's my favorite part of the worship service. It's time for the children's message, a message for all. So gather around. Today is a story about a journey. It's one of my favorite stories in all of scripture. It's the story of the three wise men. Maybe you've heard it called Three Kings. They are following a star and it's gonna lead them to that sweet little baby Jesus in the manger. I wonder if they were afraid before they began that journey. As they continued, they eventually ran into King Herod, who wasn't such a nice guy. In fact, he asked them, he said, oh, I wanna worship that sweet little baby Jesus, but he didn't really. And so they were wondering, uh oh, what are we gonna do? They continued on. They got away from King Herod and they got to that manger. And guess who they found by following that star? They got to Mary and Joseph. They got to worship Jesus. They gave him those gifts. Maybe not the best baby shower ever, but they worshiped him. I wonder what they felt on that journey. I wonder if they were scared to start it. I wonder if they felt joy. What do you feel when you are starting something new? It might not be epiphany anymore. We might not be celebrating this story at this time of year, but we give thanks that whenever we are on a journey, we don't have to search for Jesus anymore, but that he comes to us and is present in our lives and in our hearts, and he is with you this day. And for that, we give thanks. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we give thanks that you are with us on our journeys and that Jesus comes to us. Amen. Our gospel reading for today is from Matthew's gospel, the 14th chapter, beginning at the 22nd verse. Follow along if you've got a Bible at home. Open that up to Matthew. It's in the New Testament under M. Here we go. Immediately, when the disciples were in the boat, Jesus said to them, go to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind around him, he became frightened and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Friends, this is the good news. It is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So here we are, uh, second week of January, and we are focused on new beginnings. We spent time last week in worship where uh, Pastor Roger, Pastor Jeremiah, and all reflected on the new beginnings that we were sensing in our own lives. And we're going to spend a few weeks focusing on those new beginnings and then parts and pieces that come with new beginnings. Last week, we focused on the, the joy that can come out of the chaos in our lives. But we know that sometimes, every once in a while, maybe more for my life than yours, chaos distracts us. And we end up sometimes failing. That's definitely true for my life. I don't know about yours. But case and point would be the 18 new beginnings that I have on a golf course when I play. There are 18 new opportunities, 18 new potentials, 18 times the chaos of my swing searches for joy in the grass by connecting with this little white ball correctly. My philosophy, I don't know about yours, is swing hard in case you make contact. 
And when I do and I make that swing, chaos rears its ugly head and the ball usually goes violently to the left. But every once in a while, when I'm focused, when I can put away the distractions around me, when I can forgive myself for the past mistakes one hole ago or every hole ago, <clears throat> the ball actually sometimes goes straight and ends up where I can find it. See, in our golf swings, failure is going to happen. And when I say that, I'm talking about beyond just golf swings. We can't be afraid of failure. Especially in our new beginnings, failure is part of trying and living out our lives. The two most important parts of our new beginnings that we can hang on to today are these, learning from our failures and being graceful with ourselves and others when we do fail. Remember that, learning from our failures and being graceful with ourselves and the people around us when failure occurs. And maybe you've experienced that kind of grace given away to you when you've had that failure in your life, when you've, when you've missed the ball, so to speak. Or maybe you've had an opportunity to share that grace with someone else. Then I bet you know, and I know they know, it's game-changing. It's life-changing sometimes. It's one of the reasons why we at Church Unleashed and in churches around the world start our services each and every week with a time of confession and recognizing the failures that we have in life, the things that we've messed up, but then hearing about God's forgiveness and love and grace. We start that way. We don't end it, we don't skip it, but we begin our services knowing that this grace is constantly offered to us by God. We name our brokenness, our shortcomings, our slices, pulls, hooks, top balls, and even when we've whiffed and missed the ball completely, God still forgives us. But what's even greater than that is God offers us help in refocusing, learning from it and moving forward into a fresh start and a new and renewed faith. See, by refocusing on Jesus in our new beginnings, we might just cut down on some of the failures that come out in our dailiness. The scripture lesson that I read today is one of the great times when we see that sometimes we're going to fail. Peter, one of his disciples, one of the ones that's called the closest, the ones who's watched Jesus do the healings and the miracles and all the things he's been doing, he sees Jesus walking on the water and says, Lord, tell me to come to you. And Jesus says, sure, if you think you can do it, go ahead. Did you notice he actually did it? He started out and got out of the boat and he was focused on Jesus and he walked on water. He did it. But when he started to focus on the wind and the waves, he sunk like a rock. But what's so amazing about Jesus is that he doesn't let him sink. He doesn't mock him as he goes down in the water. He doesn't leave him alone. He reaches out his hand to him and holds on to his hand, and offers him grace. Oh, you of little faith, he says. He's trying to tell us, I've given you this gift of faith. It's powerful. It will get you through the failures. He offers him grace, a new beginning as he is falling. There's another great lesson. If you're a church frequent flyer, you know maybe you've just come through the Christmas season and you know that this time is epiphany. It's that time when the wise guys arrive at the manger. Many of us have put the manger scenes away already, but on uh, the, this epiphany time in the beginning of January, we celebrate that the wise men finally arrived. They have been following a star, but they got distracted along the way. They had a chance to be set up for failure because King Herod, Mr. Brutal and Paranoid, is trying to get them to tell him where Jesus is so he can have Jesus killed. But they continue on. They keep following the star. They put away the distractions and try and battle through that failure. See, these kings aren't like perfect. They're not actual kings in charge of a country. They're probably not even good Jewish worshipers. They're Gentiles. Maybe they have no religion at all. And yet they are offered from God the star to follow and find a different type of king. One that won't rule with brutality and paranoia and death. Instead, the rule that they are finding in the major will rule with grace and compassion 
and will even face and conquer death for us. Those are just two great scripture lessons that talk about the new beginnings with the parts and the pieces of failure along the way, with the potentials for failure when we try out some new beginning in life. But they are covered and corrected and forgiven along the way by God's promise and presence and grace. Well, I'm not sure where exactly you are today on your journey. Maybe you feel caught between a ruler a brutal ruler even, calling shots and you can't agree with them at all and don't agree with the vision. Maybe you feel like the wind and the waves are overwhelming you and the boat that you're in right now. Maybe you feel like you're just trying to swing hard, but you can't seem to make contact or keep things straight. Well, let me remind you that we said early in our service, what we started with in our service, you are forgiven. You are unconditionally loved by God. God's hand is being held out for you. God's presence has come for you. God's light is there for you too to follow. We're all going to fail and we're all going to fall at some point. But when we do, God's grace and compassion are there for us because of Jesus. May you sense that in all of your new beginnings. And may you unleash that grace into your world. Amen. It's time for a view from the pew, and I'm joined today by Brenda LaPuma. Thank you for being here. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm married, and my husband and I have three adult children, and we've lived in Clarence for 30 years, wow. and we've also been members here at Zion for that length of time. Uh, and uh, what are you passionate about? Um, well, let's see. As a member of Zion, I'm also the bell choir director. Okay. I've been a bell choir member for um, almost 30 years, and I never dreamed that I would be the director one day, but here I am. They put you in charge. They did. They did. We had um, very big shoes to fill. Our yeah. choir director of many, many years um, passed away, and so I, it ended up, well, who wants to do it? And so that was me. You raised your hand. I, yes, sort of. <laughs> and it's been going very well. Yeah. Um, and let's see, other things that I truly enjoy, I'm a teacher. Okay. Um, I teach fifth grade in Clarence at Sheridan Hill, okay. and I love working with my co-teachers. I'm blessed to have two wonderful teachers working with me, yeah. um, and we work hard every day to get kids to want to come back to school the next day. It is not an easy time to be a teacher. No, it isn't, and actually I was just telling the kids that today. Um, over the break, many of my family members said, you know, how does it feel to be a teacher? How are you doing? They were very concerned. And I said, well, you know, I'm really blessed. And I told this to my kids. I said, I told my family that I'm blessed to have a wonderful group of kids who come to school each day. They respect each other. They follow the rules. They want to stay well. They want to keep each other healthy. And they love being around each other. So I'm really wow. very fortunate to That's have great. that situation. It's great. You have good kids. Wonderful um, kids. Why are you a part of church? Well, um, <laughs> in the beginning, as an infant, it was no choice. I was baptized, you know, before I was two months old in the Lutheran church. And then that was just a part of my life. It's what you had to do. And then it moved into what I wanted to do, such mm -hmm. that when my husband and I moved to Clarence and we had children, you know, we had the conversation, who's going to take the kids to church in Sunday school? And he's Catholic. Um, so he nominated me. And of course, <laughs> I jumped up to that task. And so it became a matter of him coming as well. We brought our children to church. They became very much of a part of the church mm -hmm. community. Um, they were in chime choir, bell choir, youth group. Um, my son, who actually went on to become a youth director and is working in another church, um, actually jokes that when we had to punish him, we would say, you can't go to youth group tonight, just because that was something he so much wanted to do. Yeah. And, you know, we, we had to withhold some privilege, um, and that's what we did. Not that that was a good idea, but the point is, they loved church as much as, as we did. Yeah, you, that's what I was going to say. You, you loved it. They learned to love church uh, through you and that's that's powerful, it's powerful it is lesson. and it's not the the church itself it's the people yeah. and the relationships right. um, and they've carried some of those friendships with them even now into their adult life yeah is there anything else that you would like 
everyone to know uh, from your uh, view from the pew? Well, I think after sitting, especially in these pews for over 30 years and listening to very wise people like yourself, I think one thing that I've learned is that we need to see Christ in everyone. And obviously in this day and age, you, it's not always apparent. And when that's the case, we just have to be try, we have to try to be as gracious and as kind as possible mm -hmm. and give each other a break. And to me, that's the bottom line is just be kind to each other. Amen. Well, that is a view from the pew. And thank you very much for being here. You're welcome. <laughs> Let's join together and confess our common faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you all to take a deep breath as we let go of some of our fears and turn ourselves over to God in prayer. Gracious God, we pray for your church today. In all the ways that we put up barriers in all the ways that we prevent your good news from being proclaimed to everybody, everywhere. Help us break down those barriers, tear down those divisions, help us to let go of our fears that we might reach all of your human children with your message of unconditional love. Lord, we pray for this creation, this wonderful earth that you have given to us to live on and to care for. We need your help with that because we're not doing such a good job. In all of those places where our, our fear is driving our greed, all those ways that we exploit this earth, help us to slow down, help us to breathe deep, Remember that everything comes from you. Give us your wisdom as we change, as we get a new start in all the ways that we take care of this planet. Lord, this day we pray for leaders of nations. We pray for people who go to work in Washington and the Capitol as they... Uh, do their important work and make decisions on behalf of all of us. Give your wisdom to them. Help them to, to make good decisions that do your justice for everyone. And Lord, we thank you this day and every day for all those who have told us your story, who have blessed us with the, the faith that helps us conquer our fears. Lord, we thank you for all the saints. And we ask now that you hear us all as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Roger, for leading us in prayer today. Uh, it is so good to gather in prayer with one another, and I just love doing that together here in church. But we're so thankful for all of you who continue to reach out to us and tell us uh, about what's going on in your life or a prayer concern you have. Um, we've, we've had notes come in, and we're just excited. Uh, I heard recently from uh, Linda, and she's just excited about uh, the wonderful programs of Church Unleashed. And although she can't get to her regular church, she feels like she's still in church when she's here with us today. So. Amen. That's a similar message. To, we heard from a Sylvia. She appreciates our weekly television service and she said she's so happy 
to have found this community. Well, Sylvia, we give thanks to God that you, God led you to join us. And we give thanks to everyone who makes this ministry possible. This couldn't happen without your prayers, without your support, and without your gifts. So thank you to each and every one of you. Yeah, we're just blessed by that and glad that you are a part of this. Don't forget, if you're able to get to your local church, please do that. Some folks continue to watch Church Unleashed as a second service, or they watch it some, they DVR it during the week, mm -hmm. or they watch it online uh, that you can find on YouTube. So we invite you to use this either on Sunday or during the week as a time for devotions for you. So friends, as you go on your way today, may the Lord go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you beside you to be your friend, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. Go today celebrating and rejoicing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Church, may you be unleashed, unleashed into the world to go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.